Hi guys, and welcome back to More Than Cars YouTube. Let's turn the radio off. Right, this morning I'm discussing, well, two things actually. One, why I totally 100% agree with Shmi 150, um, and or Tim Burton, as most of you probably know him, um, and the price of the GT8 and how much I pay. A lot of you said, well, the only one left in your collection you haven't let people know the price of, so I'm going to let you know today. And as always, if uh, figures isn't your thing, I'm going to do that in the latter half of the video. So uh, stay tuned for the first bit. Um, and then if figures aren't your thing, just uh, turn it off. I'll do a little B-roll between the two. Anyway, at this point, I still don't know if you're enjoying the two cameras. So uh, do let me know again in below. And hopefully tonight I actually find out if you enjoyed that or not. So I might carry on this or not carry on this. Anyway, without further ado, let's uh, start the GT8 because uh, this is something fantastic. Now it is... It is quarter to eight in the morning, so uh, I, I don't know how many of you have actually watched my like first videos on YouTube, but I very much doubt it, because we're only getting a little bit of traction now, but I fitted the switch, the famous switch that you can get for the GT8. So this basically, normally, when you start up um, the car, obviously it's loud anyway, GT8 is loud when it starts, but the valves are shut, technically, um, and even though it's slightly over-revving, obviously, to warm up, it, it's pretty loud, but... The, the flaps are actually shut, and then only as it goes over 4,000 in normal mode, the flaps open, and then if you put it in sports, I think they open three or three and a half thousand. Whereas this little, little switchy Rooney, or it's a relay that you plug into the back, um, actually permanently locks the flaps open. So I feel in the mornings when I try and start it, I have to like hold the, the silence button down to make it as quiet as possible. So uh, here we go, hold this and... Uh and it's still horrendously loud, and I don't think this, this microphone does not do justice to that amazing titanium exhaust. So, um, uh, we're not far off needing fuel, but I think, I think we'll survive getting to work. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, get going. So, first of all, let's address it. Why? Why do I agree with Shmi? So I, I, I was watching through, as most people are doing, probably watching the entirety of YouTube at the moment. Um, I was basically flicking back through his channel to see if I'd uh, missed any videos. And I had, I'd actually missed one about his Aston Martin GT8, where he went to um, Gaydon, actually. And ironically, I was actually at that meet. And this is one of the con contributing factors to why I actually, um, completely agree with me by the fact that this car is is never going to leave my garage I, I said probably this time last year I'd probably keep it six months to a road trip but I've genuinely fallen in love with this car this is one of the ones that kind of when I first got into driving so like I've told you and if you've watched the video about my car history I had an old V8 M3 that was a very Yes, it was automatic, but it was a very visceral experience. Like you could tell what the car was doing. So that's the same with this. Like every little bit, you can tell what it's doing. And I've fallen deeper and deeper in love with, this is how I like driving. I'm not necessarily wanting the fastest, smoothest, you know, et cetera. I actually enjoy the way that if you just hold your foot down, it's very, you actually have to drive it like a manual. But Coming on to why I agree with Shmi, that this wasn't actually one of his big points in his video. This was not one of the main contributing factors why he would never get rid of the GT8. And this comes on to a bit of the car community world anyway. And kind of, I think following yesterday's video and the day before of why we genuinely enjoy driving and enjoy cars, it's about community. It is genuinely about other people you meet in the car world and whether you're in a like i said the other day 50 pound or 5000 or half a million pound car people just like cars people genuinely enjoy cars and no matter what level you're at you, you find the same enjoyment you you genuinely can have the conversation with anybody about any type of car and everybody gets on and i think that's fantastic so one of the big contributing factors as to why i will never get rid of the GTA is actually 
the GT8 Club or the GT8 Owners Group. It's, it's A, they've got a page on Instagram. Um, I think it's called GT8 Club or GT8.club or something like that. I might put a link in the description below if you want to go check them out. But um, So that's a big factor. But we also have a WhatsApp, a WhatsApp group of only GT8 owners. But by the very fact of what type of car this is, nine times out of ten or probably actually i think everybody in that group no so i'm going to say 10 out of 10 people have got other cars and in the same kind of level so you can have the conversation with like-minded individuals because they've got a gt8 they obviously this type of car appeals so nine times out of ten your kind of genuine car interests are going to be more or less the same because you're in a group who owns the same type of car as you and this is a big big factor to why I will never get rid of the GT8 because some of the conversations you can have in that group really help you out and you know the types of people that you meet in the genuine car world are, are amazing and you you effectively become lifelong friends through the car industry and I've also made business contacts through the car world because obviously to afford these you know multiple cars and different types of levels of cars most, time, most times the business owners. So, you know, the actual business deals that come off the back of owning some of these cars is fantastic. And it is a little community. And like I said, at any level, whether you've got, you know, a Citroen or a Clio or whatever, you, you're probably in a group of Clio owners and people can, oh, 488. He looked really miserable. Why did he look so miserable? He's driving a 488 in the morning. Oh dear. Anyway, some people, but, yeah, no, it's, that's one, I, I would say one of the major reasons why I don't think I'll ever get rid of this car. And obviously it's driving style, and it's whole characteristic, the fact that A. Aston Martin are never going to build a car like this again. Never, never in a million years are they going to build a naturally aspirated V8 that's 4.7 litres that drives with a single clunky clutch, clutch that is technically an automated manual. There we go, they're just not going to do that. With a titanium exhaust. I mean, titanium as a metal is actually getting rarer anyway. So I think as we go forward, I don't think titanium exhaust will exist in the next couple of years. Or they might, but they'll be so ridiculously expensive, it's not worth it. So I think the whole contributing factor to this car as a platform, A, it's going to be a collectible. If I keep this for another 10 years and I don't kind of put 100,000 miles on, but mm, I might do because I, I enjoy driving it too much. Um, you know, it's, I'm not going to lose horrendous amounts of money on it. I, I'm, it's, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. <laughs> I genuinely love this thing to bits. The whole, the world that's around. And that is why I 1000% agree with Shmi 150. The fact that this baby is never leaving my garage. My only wish is I wish at the time when these came out, I was in a position to be offered one, so I could have specced it in my own specification. But being brutally honest, this is not far off anyway. And I think the whole, what this chap did with the spec of this and going absolutely nuts with the, the Q options is just mind bending. The fact that he even changed the color of the weave in the carbon in the center console, just looking at the actual original price sheet of this car, mind-bending and I think this is one of the only GT8s that has actually depreciated a fair bit because simply how nuts this bloke went with the spec it's just just unreal and I love it I absolutely love it from the community to the car it's brilliant anyway I'm gonna pause there roll some b-roll and uh, let's uh, talk about money and how much it actually costs Hope you enjoyed that little bit of b-roll let's talk about the money involved in this car so this car when i bought it from aston martin bearing in mind it was basically a new car the chap had taken delivery but i think it only left the showroom for about a couple of months before it went back 
And when I bought it, I think it only had a couple of hundred miles on. I think it might even had less than a couple of hundred miles on. It was basically a new car. The chap had never used it. Why? I have no idea. I really missed out. This is amazing, as I've just explained. But anyway, how much was the car? I paid £178,000 for this car. There we go. And to be honest, they're floating around the 165 mark currently anyway. Yes, I appreciate then theirs is the manuals and probably with a little bit less miles on. So I imagine mine is around the 160 mark, taking into consideration the fact that this is the only yellow one and the fact that the Q spec is completely nuts, but com compromising the fact that I have actually done some decent miles in it. So it might be slightly less, might be slightly more. It'll all depend on A, the person wanting to buy it. And I've actually had a couple of offers of people wanting to take this off me. Um, and that, being brutally honest at the moment I'm sorry I'm not interested like I love it too much and it's such a community that actually keeps you holding on to these cars and it's an experience when you jump back in it if you know what I mean but anyway what you're probably more interested in is how much I put as a deposit so there's a couple of things to factor in when depositing on something that is a genuine collectible that's already had its initial depreciation. So I didn't have to put down the biggest chunk in the world. I actually put, I think I put 55, it was either 55 or 60. You'll have to excuse me, I genuinely can't remember. And I couldn't find the uh, paperwork on email. I have it in a drawer, but the drawer's at my normal work what I haven't visited. So yeah, I, I haven't got that to hand. It was either 55 or 60K. What in the grand scheme of seems, yes, it's above the 10% mark, but as I always said, I am not one for just putting 10% into cars because I like to have a, you know, an equity stake in the vehicle if I did desperately need to get rid of it, say to a, a dealer and they want a, an horrendous margin or whatever. But on the flip side, the finance company aren't that bothered about me paying off a massive chunk of money of it because they don't believe it's going to devalue much more than it already has. And you know, considering the chunky deposit I put in. So my actual monthly on an Aston Martin GTA is £460. What I don't feel is a lot of money at all. So if you think about it, that's just over £5,000 a year to keep and own an Aston Martin GTA. Okay, there's a servicing cost involved in here because this car is out of standard manufacturer's warranty, so we'll come on to that in a second. And the fact that old Aston Martins don't come with a service plan. Any new Aston Martin does come with a service plan, um, so that's free. I paid, it's actually just had its service in Jan January, February time, and obviously it needed its MOT. So its service was £1,500. Um, that was a standard oil filter change, nothing dramatic. Um, and that's not a bad price when you're considering the value of one of these cars or any car of this value that's about standard. Um, it needed no brakes, no pads. There are steel on this one, so eventually it will need brakes and pads. Um, it didn't need any tyres, they're still perfectly fine. Uh, the rears are a little worn because obviously I've driven it a fair bit last summer. Um, but it needed nothing doing to it, that's just a standard service. However, Bearing in mind it's an old Aston. Now, I'm quite confident that this car will not go wrong. However, if it did, I would not want to be lumped with a massive service bill. So I did put a manufacturer's extended warranty. So the way they do that, they actually do a however many points check they do around the vehicle to make sure that it hasn't got anything majorly obviously wrong with it anyway um, to effectively approve the process of putting a manufacturer's warranty on the car but it cost me £1,500 to put a one-year extended manufacturer's warranty so that basically covers any single component that is not wearable and in all honesty i genuinely think that is worth it not the fact that i've had anything go wrong with the gta i haven't this has been absolutely perfect it's glitched a couple of times so i've been driving along really hard in full uh, full manual mode i change gear and it actually gets stuck um, and effectively unable to change gear. I then had to turn, pull over to the side of the road, turn it off and on about three times and it sorted itself out. It's also glitched when um, 
or trying or oh, what was it doing it, it's glitched when trying to start it's glitched trying to wear the fact of it couldn't get into neutral all around the gearbox so that is primarily why an extended warranty was something that I wanted to put on this because if a big lumpy component goes wrong with it I don't want to be landed with a 10 15 thousand pound service bill because at the end of the day to fix anything it's not necessarily the part that's going to be expensive but it is certainly Aston Martin's labor to actually uh, take the thing to bits and fix it so in my opinion I think that is well worth it now obviously if you buy a second-hand car from a manufacturing like like say Aston Martin Nottingham you do get a one-year warranty effectively extended one-year warranty with any purchase but that's built into kind of the dealers margin anyway but that is something you, you kind of have to consider and you can actually put an extended warranty on any used car it would just have to go to Aston Martin be inspected and improved so the, there you go that is the kind of yearly ownership a running cost of an Aston Martin or of my GT8 so if we add those two figures together it's three plus about just over five five six seven eight so we say eight and a half thousand pounds to own and run a GT8 for a year what in the grand scheme can things I don't feel is bad that's three months ownership just finance on the DBS I know which one I would pick out the two <laughs> the DBS because that's daily and it's faster and modern <laughs> I'm joking actually am I joking that's a very interesting question anyway that is more than enough drivel and spark of conversation in the uh, comments below is that what you think I personally think this is really good value for money um, and obviously my others are expensive because they're new cars I think would it be worth me sacking one of those off and getting a couple of second-hand cars I don't know this is all things I'm considering and pondering how a I can engage you guys slightly more in the channel and how to expand my garage without expanding my finance bill or I just might expand the finance bill. Who'll, who knows? Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. I really hope everyone is staying safe and staying sane and everything like that. I have sim updates to come probably in tomorrow's video when I hear back, but all sorts. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching. I will see you again soon for plenty more videos to come. Stay safe, guys. Bye-bye.